All right, guys, so we're starting out this video. And the reason I'm making this video is there aren't a lot of guidelines of how to access bank two, sensor one, which is located right on the firewall. And it's very difficult to access to. Um, I've seen some tricks online to make it quite a bit easier. So uh, I'm gonna test this out, see how full foolproof this is. And uh, starting out, this is where we're starting. So I already removed the valve cover, so I'm gonna take this off. Essentially what we're trying to do is access this area and give us enough room to reach down there and make some stuff happen. So I'm probably gonna remove the air box right here, maybe unclip some hoses and uh, go that route. All right. All right, guys, so first things first, I remove the cover. Let's see if this is a tan, yeah. So loosen that up, I'm gonna loosen the air box up. Uh, we got a couple or a hose up here. All right, guys, so we're gonna access uh, some of these hoses. Uh, just be careful, these hoses look uh, nice and brittle at this point in time. So, let's remove that. Let's remove this. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. Sweet. So you guys can see what I'm doing. This, we're gonna unplug the, this sensor. Well, these are quite a bit uh, more frail than I expected. So be very, very careful when you're accessing anything over here, okay? So let me get the right tool for, what I need done over here. All right, so essentially I just got the flat head, twisted it, and then this is this popped out. Um, let's see, we're going to remove some of these clips. That goes on the underside, so that's cool. We got a lot of this box. Uh, let's see. All right, so now we're down here. If you guys have power tools, this is gonna make the job a lot easier. Uh, we're gonna have to use um, hand tools to get to the sensor, but um, I'll show you what I mean. So that's out of the way. Let's see what we're working with here. Um, actually, we could probably leave this and just remove this portion of the air box. Yeah, let's do that, guys. Let's just remove this portion of the air box. Okay, yeah, let's do that instead. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and actually leave the air box uh, in because that's not causing any issues. What's causing issues is over here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me move these things. All right guys, so it's very difficult to see, but essentially we're going down into this area and then there's the O2 sensor right here. Um, a lot of people are talking about taking off the headers themselves uh, or the exhaust manifold. I'm not going to do any of that. I am, however, going to disconnect this hose. Oh, you guys can see it. Okay, so I am, however, going to disconnect this hose. It'll give us uh, access to a little better working area. Um, so I think this is a heater hose right here. Remember to work if you're gonna do this, work on the car when it's been sitting. Um, you do not want to do this kind of work when everything is hot, so. All right, guys, so I already have the uh, drain there. Uh, I'm going to remove this. There should be coolant in here. Or a little bit. Yeah, okay, sweet. So there's a little bit of coolant coming out of there. That's okay. This hose. That hose is on there, nice guys, nice, nice, nice. So, all right guys, so I broke that loose. We're good. Let's pull that out so we got this hose out now. All right guys, so you can get a better understanding of exactly where I'm at. So I'm on the passenger side of the engine. I'm going down here and I've removed the heater hose that goes right here. And then let's see if we can get down there. Okay, you see that O2 sensor? 
that's what I'm trying to target right down there. So let's get that, let's get some light on it and uh, try to access it with a crow's foot. All right, guys, so, oops. All right, so essentially this is what we're working with. This is the crow's foot. I'm going to see how we're going to be able to place that on there, but essentially nothing fits there. So we're gonna put it in on the O2 sensor. So let's just pretend the O2 sensor is like, boom, we got it in, right? And then we're gonna get a bar and we're gonna hit it, boom, boom, boom. And it's gonna force the O2 sensor to break loose and then we can reach our hands in there and pretty much loosen everything up. That will make sure that we're not removing any of this, the exhaust, getting underneath. So it's gonna save us quite a bit of time if we can get down there and actually get it done. All right, guys, so I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. I already got the crow's foot on there. You see um, the black thing on the O2 sensor. Essentially, I'm going to grab something and I'm going to hit that end of it very hard a couple times. That'll give me enough. Uh, hopefully we can break it loose and then I got enough room to just reach down there and take it all off. So let's try that out. If it works, man, I'll be so happy. I won't have to remove everything else. So let's check it all out. All right. So sometimes as a mechanic, you can't fit certain tools in certain places. You see that black piece? That's already a tool that I have on there. I can't hit, uh, put a ratchet on the crow's nest. That's what, or the crow's foot, I'm sorry. Um, I can't put a ratchet on the crow's foot. There's not enough room or leverage. So what I'm going to do is put a long extension right there on the end and smack it and see if I can budget loose. Otherwise, I gotta do a ton of work and remove a ton of that stuff so let's see if it works all right guys so i understand that angle is super unconventional right and um you see this bar right here what i'm essentially doing is going right there let me focus in for you it'll lock in the focus all right so and then on the top side of this which you can't see is i have a sledgehammer all right, guys, so if you ever see a mechanic working on your car with a sledgehammer and something that resembles this long pole, uh, there's probably a good chance not to trust the guy. But since I'm not a mechanic, it's perfect. Oh, snaps. Bro. I can't believe it worked. Yep, there we go. All right, let me show you where I'm at, guys. So, essentially, that's the crow's foot right there, and I hit it right on the end, and now the O2 sensor is loose, and I'll just be able to turn it out by hand. Life hack. Dang, guys, you don't even believe what happened. So, the trick worked literally a sledgehammer and some kind of long metal extension so you can get like some pretty good stuff there we go there we go they said it couldn't be done but that's why you follow this channel guys hey so if you don't know who i am my name is eric i own a used car dealer here in southern california if you like videos like this make sure you subscribe you know check out what I'm doing, like the video if you thought this is cool, and I'm going to keep uh, making videos on the IS300, so make sure you guys follow, subscribe. I do neat things like this to save you literally hours at a time out of your day. I'm popping that other O2 sensor on, clearing the code, and we are officially done with this headache. All right, guys, so if you've kept up with this video, you understand that I've been chasing P0125 for a long time now. Um, so to be able to access that and fix that easily and provide amazing content to you, it makes me so happy, I have no idea. So let me grab the new O2 sensor that's inside the car. I'll pop that bad boy back in. All right, guys, so again, that was awesome. I can't believe it actually worked. You saw the O2 sensor uh, removed. This is the crow's foot right here. Um, this is this is the O2 sensor. Um, this is exactly what I used. I got it from Harbor Freight, okay? So just, uh, just know that. Um, cheap tool. It ended up working out. Um, when you place this on the nut, okay, so I'm going to help you uh, understand something really quick. When you place this on the O2 sensor, 
okay? If you come at it, like with the uh, with uh, an extension, like off to the side like that, it's just going to slide off. But if you twist this more of this angle when it's on, and you're hitting it right here direct, just bink, that loosens, this comes out so simple, all right? So if you've seen all the other videos, you understand that headers need to be removed. Some people are taking intake manifolds off. They're literally taking all night to do this job. You'll be able to do this job um, in an hour tops after watching this video. There's not enough content on it. This is all to fix P0125 for me, or if you're actually throwing the code for the bank two sensor one, this will fix the problem too. I can't remember what code that is, uh, but I want you to know that it will fix that also. But for me, I've been chasing this code. Uh, finally, I'll be able to uh, clear it out, but I've done thermostat. Um, I've done uh, the ECT sensor, the one on the engine block. I've done the uh, the fan switch sensor, which is on the, um, on the radiator itself. Um, I set there to stand. There's one other thing that I did to uh, make sure that I fixed this problem. But on top of that, I'm on my fifth repair now, all to chase down the P0125, which all in all, uh, make sure you guys get a Denso branded uh, O2 sensor. You don't wanna use the universal style that you have to splice in and all that. Use the Denso stuff. It comes with the anti-seize already. Um, this will get you in good shape and you can trust the quality product isn't going to fail right out of the bag, okay? So with that being said, let's install this. We're gonna do the reversal of everything, but it's going to be quite a bit easier, okay? So I'm actually uh, gonna go ahead and put this on, uh, on time-lapse just so you guys can see what I ended up doing. All right guys, while I'm driving, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you why I just went through everything I just went to to uh, pretty much clear out P0125. Um, so essentially, I got two codes when I first picked up this car. It's a new car to me. One of them was for an O2 sensor, bank one, sensor one. I replaced that. Once I replaced that, the uh, check engine code, plot back up, same one, P0125. I read a ton about it, and then everyone's talking about that it could be the air fuel uh, sensor. So I'm like, all right, well, I did bank one, uh, sensor one, I might as well do bank one, sensor two, if that's what the code called for, right? So I ended up doing that, I reset the codes, and then, uh, the code that I was getting for Bank 1 Sensor 1, completely gone, but the P0125 kept coming up. So essentially at this point, I'm down two oxygen sensors, well, 102 sensor, 1 AF sensor. Okay, so the rest of that code, if you read about it, it talks about coolant and coolant level and coolant temp. So then I replaced the uh, ECT sensor that's on the block. Boom, nothing, didn't work code kept coming right back up. All right, cool. So there's another sensor for coolant on the radiator. So I went ahead and swapped that bad boy out. Boom, got it, drove it, light came right back on. Nothing going on there. So I'm like, well, fuck, it has to be the thermostat. So then I did the thermostat and when I took out the thermostat, it needed to be replaced anyway, but it was all messed up, the O-ring, you saw all that. Did that, reset the code, code kept back up, came back up. So at this point, I'm like, 
I've done everything, everything, right? Except the Bank 202 sensors, which everyone's saying O2 sensor, O2 sensor on the forums. The problem is that I was throwing a code for an O2 sensor on Bank 1 sensor 1. So I figured, well shit, it's gotta be one of those two sensors, the two sensors that are on Bank 1, which is uh, cylinders 1, 2, and 3, that's Bank 1, uh, and the two sensors that go there. Long story short, that wasn't it either. Boom, so the last day to fix the problem, I tackled Bank 2 Sensor 1. I haven't had a code for that, never had a code for that, went ahead and did it. Man, was it a job, man. Um, so if you've done any kind of reading about it, if you've done any kind of research about it, you know that it's a pain in the ass, man. You gotta take off the headers, you gotta do this, that, but I figured out how to do it way easier. It took me about 45 minutes to get everything all replaced and done. Uh, but long story short, I wanted to make this video so that everybody knows the process that I went through to fix that error code on an IS300, the P0125, um, and everything I did and why my reasoning took me to the things I did. So long story short, all you should do is scan the car, check the live data, okay? When you check the live data, it's gonna show you your O2 sensors. There's four of them. Bank one, sensor one, bank one, sensor two, bank two, sensor one, bank two, sensor two. And on the live data, it shows the readings of each one of those sensors. My reading came as completely different than the three other sensors. I did this entire job, cleared the code. I've driven about 15 miles now, hasn't came back up. I am 100% for sure that this is a fix. Uh, every time I reset it previous to this, code kept back up in about two, two miles. I'm on the freeway, I'm going somewhere. Problem is fixed, guys. So, hopefully you liked the video. Enjoy the shit out of it. Uh, comment, subscribe. I own a, a small used car dealer. I get into stuff like this all the time. Uh, comment below if you have any kind of, uh, you know, if you want to give me advice or you need advice, just let me know. I'll make sure to shoot it out, all right? So Eric Greenell out.